Welcome to another edition of the Corner Booth Podcast from Green Spot Restaurant, brought to you by our friends over at Guaranteed Industries and Empire Gold. I'm Aaron Rand, along with Bill Brownstein and Leslie Chesterman, and tonight we are guest-free. So let's jump right in, panelists. Uh, let's start yes. off with Eric Duhem. In the news now for, I don't know, all the wrong reason. Apparently, Eric Duhem did not understand that in an election, there are no participation medals. Right. You lose, you're done, <laughs> yeah, it's which over. Which is interesting, because school that's what today, he's doing. everybody gets a participation medal. Oh. And I, I understand his point. He showed up, he should get something. No, no. How many people voted for him? Well, Not 13% enough. of the population, so over 500,000 Five, Quebecers. That's a, I heard that today. He's saying that he should be let in because 500,000 people voted for him. Yeah. Well. And that by virtue of that, he should then be allowed to speak in the National Assembly, uh, to have an office in the National Assembly, or, uh, and he won't specify what, he'll have something that the government won't, or he'll do something the government is not going to like. Oh. Now, the thinking is he would have a protest in front of the National Assembly, which would really be something, right. but he won't confirm that. He says the media is saying that's what he's going to do. I thought he said he's going to start a petition. Failing a protest, right, he may right. start a petition. I just heard that on the radio, yeah. a petition. Okay. Well, but on the bright side. Where, he, what is the bright side? Well, there is no bright side right. to that. But would he swear allegiance to King Chuck the Third? Well, I mean, he could join the PQ and join yeah. the CAC and not doing that, yeah. although nobody knows how that's going to play out either. It's right. not going to play out well at all because as some learned constitutional scholar pointed out, the Constitution is not a buffet. You don't get to pick and choose what you want in it or not. They'll have to open up something that they, a Pandora's box that they don't ever want to be uh, opening up okay. to, to change that. But right. now I saw Paul St. Pierre Poimondon talking about this specific issue with Maya Johnson on CTV. Right. And he said there are differing opinions from scholars as to whether they can do this or not. Right. Well, why don't we just get rid of the monarchy altogether yeah, and make okay. it easier for everybody? Sure. If, if there was a referendum on that, how would you guys vote? Absolutely. Uh, no. It, well, like they did. Uh, no. I mean, it's ridiculous. And right. uh, and I mean, we. You can make fun of his efforts or not, but the point being, he's not a hypocrite. He does not feel he he represents a party that wants to separate. He does okay. not feel. Right. A lot of us don't feel we should yeah, be yeah, swearing yeah. allegiance. I'm to done it. With and that's the okay royal. to do yeah. as a referendum, but let's right. do that within the proper means to do it, not right. just deciding one day. Right. You're right. not going to pledge allegiance, so we right. all have to now but hold why, up the sitting. Okay, but why has there been no talk about dumping the royal family since the Queen died? Is it too soon? Yes. Isn't it a good time too now? Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. So, so we just, have to give King Charles a little time to settle buried. in. She's under the rock. And he's time not going to be coordinated for another year, right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but right. Right. Here's, here's the other question, right? I got right? the invitation. If this is the key point in your platform right now, and Paul St. Pierre Plymouth was making it that, why wasn't this talked about in the run-up to the election? If you knew you were going to do this, why wouldn't you have even mentioned that to someone and now made this the main issue, which you said it is for the PQ right now? And Why? I find that bizarre because I don't think Rene Levesque, as much as he might have detested the idea, they all went along. Legault went along. They all go along because they know it's opening a box they don't want to open. But the point being, he says that he's got to be true to himself, which is you have to respect him for that. But it's a no-win situation. Yeah, but also, isn't it with everything going on in the world these days, isn't this what's a non-issue issue? I mean, yes. really... It really, is, is this issue. important? No, yeah. it's not. It's and that's not, just it. and it's getting a lot of attention. Yeah, it's probably getting too much attention, which is why we should move on. Well, I, yeah. So let's move on to something that will be getting a lot of attention. <laughs> Let me guess. Uh, the closure of the Lafontaine oh. Tunnel for the next, hold on, wait for it, three, three years. years. Right. Three okay. of the six lanes will be closed for three years. You have no idea. You don't go that way that often, do you? No, I try not to go try. that way now, because of the LaFontaine Tunnel. Exactly. <laughs> but you don't understand how much, or you do understand how much traffic comes in and out of there. And no. it is going to be hell on earth this way. It is going to be nuts. But see, we, we and, can't and, have anything and it's to offer, though, in terms of helping people. All the government said, the transport department said, if this is how you travel, yes, there'll be extra shuttle buses and extra metro service, but you should have a plan B. Yeah, what's what's plan, plan B? Helicopter. <laughs> Flying cars? What's yes, uh, plan B? Right. That is right. the plan Get B. A Get job. a different job. That's yeah, it. that's plan B. Or move. You know, move to somewhere where you don't have to take... I find the left tunnel very scary. I, you know, it is scary. I don't want to sound like the weak female here, 
But I get into that tunnel and I say 19 Hail Marys. Uh, and I don't even know the Hail Mary anymore off my heart, but I say it anyway because it's people are crazy in that tunnel. Yeah. It's, it's a very I'm sorry, you find them just crazy in the tunnel? Is well, that the Montreal drivers. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, are, I wanted to clarify. But here. the point being, we have various ways to get into the city from the west, from the south, from the north. That is the principal way yeah, into the right. city from the east or out. Right, right. And it's not as if people who live way out there are able to just say, well, I'm going to take a bus, I'm going to take a or train. The Victoria <laughs> Bridge. They the can't. Well, they will. The they don't have a choice. Right. But it go, like, what is that? how is that going to impact uh, the Jacques Cartier Bridge? How is it well, going to impact everything? There'll be a little right. bit more traffic. <laughs> a little and bit, also, a if they more. say it's going to take three years, it means it's going to take five years. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Right. And, and it'll cost that. a couple of extra billion dollars. Right, from what right, All right. right. So speaking of motor or drivers, uh, there's a feasibility study about to begin that would tax people who live here the more they drive, the more they pay. This is something the city wants to study because, as you know, this city uh, would rather have no cars on the road and just all bikes all the time. And at the end of the day, the city is making less money now uh, as far as revenue goes because more and more electric cars are being driven, so they're not paying a gas tax. How are they going to know how much more you drive? I don't know. Are going to put a little boot out. on you? Or like They'll figure it out at the end of the day when you go to apply for your license to see the mileage on your car. Maybe apply a fine then. My question is, is it fair to yet again, because you know this administration, cars bad, right. bicycles good. Right. Another tax for people who are forced to drive because they can't afford to live in the city. Maybe they work here and we're going to tax them even more because they're driving that much more. I've given up on driving in the city altogether because well, you can't get anywhere. You can't park anywhere. Yeah. You're much better off walking, taking taking transport, taking a cab. Taking yeah, well, that's all great. You live in the city. What about people who don't? No, but I'm saying it's people, you're worried about people living in the city being taxed as a consequence. Uh, they've won the war. Like, yeah, right. I, I give up. I'm not yeah, driving. I can't take here. it anymore. I can't. Right? I can't see one more cru Barry. Yeah, I mean, it Nobody's is true. absolutely pointless to try to to try to drive within the city yeah. or to come from outside the city to drive within. And then the, some people drive for work. I mean, yeah. some people drive. What, what people just people. driving around the city yeah. for fun? Nobody's driving well, around you know, you, for fun. It's funny you say that. I think sometimes the the, the administration thinks that's what people do. Right. Well, we just get in the car and drive for an yeah. hour, basically just because it's a lovely day to take a drive. Right. But it's I'm always never behind a lovely day to but take I'm a drive. But I'm always behind those people who are driving slowly in their lives. That's because they don't know where they're going. Right. There's a lot of those, <laughs> there are, which is there understandable are. given right. all the detours and road closures. So but you can't that. park anywhere. You, every street's got an obstruction. I don't know. We can like the city says only 30 percent of the. The difficulties with road construction that relates to them. It's condos, it's the province, it's the feds. I don't know. Whatever it is, you can't get there. But the, all big cities are dealing with this, you know? So it's not just Montreal. Everybody, the pedestrian areas are getting bigger in all big cities. A city like London, there's a tax even to drive, get into the city yeah. driving. I mean, they're, they're not wrong to be doing this. I mean, you consider and say there are too many bikes and all this and all that, but you know, Every time you see a bus go by and you see all the people in the bus, you say, thank God they aren't all in cars. So it is, you know, they are doing the right thing. Even okay. if it bugs us, they're doing but the right thing. But to that end, and I, this is a very unpopular opinion in this city, I said, if we're going to charge motorists more money, why can't we at least get some money? For, there are four and a half million, we think, cyclists in this province. If they each pay $20 for a bicycle yeah. license, a permit, right. like we used to, <laughs> Right. A generation ago, right. we did. that would right. raise ninety million dollars. That's a lot of extra public yeah. transit. And anytime you bring it up, people are saying, "Well, why would we punish cyclists?" And my argument is, everybody uses the road: right. cyclists, motorists, and yes, there's Good no point. wear and tear from bike bikes. Paths, bike yeah. Paths, yeah. but why not? And what about all so the big users? Right. Well, wow. they're paying money already. We're using some of that money to begin with, aren't right. we? Right. I don't I know. I think that's a good point, Aaron. I think that's a good point. Right. I'll remember you said yes. that. The Corner Booth Podcast is brought to you in part by Empire Gold. Paying the most for your collectibles. And remember, at Empire Gold, you get paid right on the spot. And nobody, but nobody pays more for your gold or silver than Empire. Online, empiregold.ca. Uh, let's move on from that and talk about uh, COVID protocol, because we haven't talked about COVID in a while now. Uh, Aaron Durfel pointing out there's a new variant called Cerberus that is out now, uh, 26 different countries, seeing rises in cases. And what's happening in Quebec and literally everywhere else, to be fair, is governments throwing up their hands saying, hey, we're done. You're on your own. Yeah. Good luck. We're self not going to tell you anything else. If you got a cold, pretend it's COVID, self-isolate, but don't. If you're feeling a little bit better, you can go out again. It's up to you. 
Take it upon yourself. Be respectful. But, but I mean, that's going to work. But what's the strain like? What, what, what does he say about this strain? Oh, body that parts are It's more up. serious and possibly uh, resistant to the vaccine <laughs> <laughs> or more resistant. Okay, anyway. I just got vaccinated for the last variant. So am I not? This, this new variant. Oh, no, it's a different variant. It's another variant. It is, yeah. Wow, because that vaccine hurt, and I, I'm not, I forgot how much the vaccine hurt. I'm sorry. Hurt. Really, so, is sure? I had a very sore arm for three really? days. I forgot about that. Yeah. Anyway, but, I, I've had as many vaccinations as I'm allowed to take, boosters, whatever, right. and I thought I was covered, but every time but you a think new you're variant. covered, and then you have to take a flu vaccine at the same time because right. you could be crippled like with that. Cushion. Yes, like so a pin cushion. So the question is, do you think the government now at this stage I think they've given should be up. doing more or not? No. I think they're saying... You well, said no. No, I, right, I, right, I, right off no, the bat. No, you know what? It's funny. I had a cold this week and I thought, oh my God, I have COVID and it was a cold because I did three COVID tests and I thought, well, I haven't had a cold for yeah. four years or something. You know, this is like... Same thing. A very strange So situation. you're on board just... You know, it's like, deal with it. But yeah. either way, you're self isolating. much more than the cold. I mean, if people who are uh, uh, compromised right. or the, you know, even my mom who's 85 is like, oh, if I get it, I get it, which is blase. But she also has had many boosters and many. Uh, so we're on board with if you get it, you get it. You know what you're supposed you to, to be do. Wear a mask, wash you your hands. Stay away from people. Right, right, right. How come we all get colds at your book launch? <laughs> <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> well, we're going to get to that. I want to get to something else first since we're going to kind of throw it open. We touched on COVID. We did politics. We talked motorists. Um, I, I think we've referred to this time right now, the last few years anyways, the golden age of television. Ah. There are so many great shows. Literally, there it are. doesn't matter what the streaming service is, wherever. It's unbelievable. Yet in the midst of all this, we all agreed on one thing. Saturday Night Live sucks. And yes. I don't yes. know. I, I, like, I was shocked. You know, you tweeted it. I, I did it almost at the same time. I'm wa It was so unfunny. It was. I mean, the talent is there. I don't know if it's the writing sucks. But, like, when you think back to over the years how brilliant these guys, like, from, like, Belushi and Aykroyd and Bill Murray to Tina Fey and Amy Poehler to Kate McKinnon and all these various incarnations, and now it just sucks. Yeah, but it's it's not funny. Like, it's lame. You, you know, it's don't lame. forget the Joe Piscopo years. Like, uh, don't forget. I forgot those. They're ups and downs. <laughs> See, I, but Eddie Murphy <laughs> was there when Joe Piscopo was there, you know? But and Eddie Murphy also had we, his we look, golden moments as we well. We look back at some of the old Saturday Night Lives and we say, well, they were great, but maybe they weren't so great. But maybe we just need this new cast to give okay, them a Okay, so there's to... two things at play here. Number one, you're, ta you're both talking about people who used to be on Saturday Night Live. Right great comedians, comedians. So people will say, well, wait a sec, you're, you're old, or you're out of touch, uh, you don't get it. But I will then point out that there are more now comedy series, or at least stand-up shows, on streaming TV than have there ever yes. have been before. A lot of new talent, and they're funny. We appreciate those, yes. so it's right. not about getting old. It's about funny, right. is funny, is funny, and right. this is not it's funny. It's not funny, anymore. the writing's funny. terrible. There's a couple of, Bo and Yang, who was actually spent time in Montreal, yeah. is, is probably yeah. the best cast member at this Chloe, point in time. The Chloe girl is very good. Her Nancy bad. Pelosi, come on. Her Nancy Pelosi was brilliant. But they're desperately missing Kate McKinnon. Alex yeah. Moffat, I mean, this guy just stood up and made me laugh. He and uh, the other Mikey Day used to do the Trump Brothers, the funniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. He played Eric Trump in a way that Eric Trump can. So it's not fair, I don't think, to blame the actors because there are writers No, I, you're here, right. right. I'm blaming yeah. the writers. Something, it, yeah. It's got to get yes. better. I think they're relying on the skits that worked well in the past. They're redoing them. They do this nightclub skit. It's tired. You know? Yeah, it, it, they follow the same old pattern and they bring in music I'm told it's Lorne uh, Michaels' uh, daughter who picks the music acts. You know, if you look over the years, some of the music they brought into, you've never seen them again. And well, I mean, they and had... And if you will, Megan the Stallion for yeah, sure, Lizzo. Good. Yes, but for every one of, every Lizzo, Megan, okay, there are enough. people that you've never even... Okay, known. all right, out of touch, old people talking about SNL. <laughs> no, uh, oh, wait, Megan SNL the was our show. Okay. SNL's right. the old people <laughs> show. Okay. My kids don't like SNL. Because it's not very yeah. good now, that's why. But they, no, they, my they kids do. They, they, they don't. They don't think it's funny think at all. It's funny, but they so, didn't think it was funny when it was funny either. No. They thought it was funnier. Now all right, they let's, funny. let's move not on and talk thing. about what you do like on TV, Bill. Ah, man, there's some great stuff. Uh, I was just on Apple alone. I mean, I was watching like Dark Horse. Did you see that one? No, it's a CIA, like a M50, MI5 show. Dark Horse. Oh, but wait, you want to talk about Stanley Tucci? Okay. So oh yes. First. 
one of my favorite shows, uh, Stanley Tucci, The House of Tucci, I love it. eating his way through Italy. It's actually called Stanley Tucci Searching Italy. And the guy weighs 111 pounds and eats 111 pounds of pasta every show. I, I, I don't get it. But I mean, he, this year, the, the, this is, I think, the third series or the the second, second series. Second, second series. They started off in uh, Calabria, then they went to Sardinia, and now this week they're going to Puglia. And I mean, I just, my mouth waters everything. That, and what's fascinating is, like, people associate Italy with. You know, like pasta. Or this. There's so many types of Italian food, and there's 20 different regions, and they and all wine. have their and the wines, and they so many specialties, and you're sitting there drooling watching this, and Phenomenal. not gaining any weight, as you said. And not, yeah, right. My yeah. mother is obsessed with this show. Obsessed. Yeah. Obsessed. Now, this is a good. You know, Stanley Tucci kind of took over the slot that Anthony Bourdain had. Right. Do you think that that is a good? Do you think that we still miss Anthony Bourdain? Do you think that is taken over? Oh, night and day, the two characters. Right, right. I mean. Uh, well, uh, Anthony Bourdain will never be replaced. I mean, he brought right. an edge to his food excursion. It's like Phil Rosenwell, the other guy who oh, does right. it. They're all different. Well, Stanley Anthony Tucci Bourdain has traveled the world. Stanley Tucci's traveling, traveling Italy. Italy. Yeah, right. so. exactly. And it's Phil Rosenwell, like he travels like wherever he feels like traveling. But they have the passion for food. That's the common right. denominator. Now, Leslie, favorite show for you. Okay. I've been watching the <laughs> House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon? Wait a second. Did you watch Game of Thrones? You better watch oh, okay. Game of Thrones. All right, okay. Okay, I would say that anybody who didn't see Game of Thrones might not understand any of this that's going on. You kind of have to see it. But you know, it's good because you're like, oh, this won't be as good as Game of Thrones. And then the dragon comes out, and then, you know, somebody gets their head chopped off, and it's it's all, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of fun gore, but with this kind of medieval thing going down, and everybody's evil, and the dragon, and... You know, it's fun. It's fire. like it's, yeah. it's, you just, you know, I love it. Just everybody's escaping. evil and there's a dragon. Yeah, it's kind of hard fun. not to like it's, that. It's, it's, it's and especially with what's going on in the world today. I wish there were a few more dragons yeah. around to wipe out some people. You know? Now, are you all? Are you both fans of White Lotus or not? Yes. Bill, no, I haven't seen it. The, the what? First one the first one. Hold on. You haven't seen you haven't seen White Lotus? Zoinks? Oh. There's too many other shows. Oh, it's, it's, you it's have worth watching, to see yeah. It. You and you mentioned to. SNL. Are you Molly Lotus Shannon. shaming me? Molly Shannon is in the show. Oh, yes. I like Molly Shannon. Yes. I and Jennifer Coolidge. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. All right, so I'll tell you for me, uh, and what's really odd for me... Bad Sisters. Who? No, not yet, but I hear that's really that's good. That's terrific. Uh, you would love this. I was watching some really good ones, like We Crash with Jared Leto and Anne Hathaway, the story of WeWork, the, the guy who started that whole business. But now, I, and it's weird in a way, there's a show called Casual ah. on Netflix. No big star, recognizable, but not big stars. It's one of those shows where you watch an episode or two and you're like, yeah, it's okay. But then you keep going back and going back. I'm into season three, episode eight. Ah. And I just can't stop, not because it's great, not because it's riveting, right. but because I like the story because it seems so real in a sense. Casual. These people kind of finding their way through life, through relationships, through work. So I wouldn't say I highly recommend it, but it might be fun. If you're looking, you know, I think part of the problem sometimes is someone will tell you, oh, you have to watch the show. It's amazing. Right. I said that about Ozark. And then I told friends and friends were like, yeah, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. It's great. See, that's what I mean. I loved it. I haven't seen it. But casual, if maybe casual. one of those shows you haven't seen, I might want to consider doing I that. also, I, on uh, Amazon Prime, oh, I'm going to check on, on that BritBox channel, there is a show called Murder in Provence, okay? And I will flat out say right now, it is the worst series I've ever seen anywhere. <laughs> and I couldn't stop watching it. There you it go. Because it was so, so bad. bad. So, you know, right. people used to go to bad restaurants. You'd, you give a bad review to a restaurant, it'd be crowded. People want to see if it's as bad. As you said, as it was. you say, uh -huh. and I gotta say, Murder in Provence is a, is so stupid, and dorky, and awful. Okay. Yeah. It's Slow Horses, the one with Gary Oldman, uh, MI5 uh, like thriller. A Gary bunch Oldman. Of, Gary Oldman's phenomenal. It's a bunch of guys like uh, the gang who couldn't shoot straight to MI5s okay. so are relegated to uh, like okay. another unit. But bad sisters. Bad sisters. Uh, you got to watch. Five sisters are evil. They want to get. Well, they're not evil. They're they're a lot of fun. But one of them is married to, like, an absolute brute of a human, and they spend the entire series plotting to kill him to make their sister's life easier. You know, it's funny. It's a comedy. When you said uh, uh, Gary Oldman, I thought you said Gary Coleman. Thought, <laughs> different show. What's he been yeah, doing? Different show. Different strokes. Okay. <laughs> 
The Corner Blue Podcast is brought to you in part by Guaranteed Industries. They are a Lennox premier dealer. They can take care of all your heating or cooling needs, residential, industrial, or commercial. Guaranteedindustries.com or call them at 514-342-3400. They are a Lennox premier dealer. Uh, okay, let's move on to... Uh Something to do uh, out on the town, maybe yes. going out this weekend, whatever, okay. what are you recommending? I have an amazing recommendation. There is a play called Cyclorama that is playing right now at the Centaur and at Théâtre d'Aujourd'hui. And in between, so the play takes place at the beginning of the Centaur, then you get on the city bus. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. And then you go to Wait the second, second part the in Théâtre d'Aujourd'hui, yes. This is a creation of a wonderful woman called Laurence Dauphiné. And the reason she did this is that she works in the French theater world, and she went to an award show for English theater, and there were a thousand people there, and she knew five of them, okay? And she said it's ridiculous that the two theater communities in English and French have no contact with each other. And this is bridging the two solitudes. So she's bridging the two solitudes so wait, in it, the most brilliant is way. Is it in English and in French? It's, it's in English well, and in French. Oh. When she speaks English, there are French side pedals and vice versa. Okay. It is the effects are brilliant, the acting is brilliant. There's another actor with her called Antoine Yared, and he is from Montreal, went to Dawson. He went to Stratford because he couldn't work in French here. So he went, so they're okay. talking about, she can't work in English here, he can work in French here. Then there are two wonderful people called Alexander Kedzier and Aaron Hurley, and they talk about the historic situation with why they're, uh, how English theater kind of died after the Quiet Revolution and how French theater really rose up. So there used to be so many English theaters in okay. Montreal, and now we're down to two. So, really. Cyclorama. Cyclorama, is the name. playing at the Centaur Théâtre aujourd'hui. It's English and French. Okay. Brilliant, brilliant. Maybe, brilliant. maybe the big question here is the bus that you yes, have to take. Yes, that'd be a real is logistical a problem. Do you have to wait for no, a bus. It How is, do they it, plan it? <laughs> they're chartered city buses. Oh, it's a chartered. Oh, so bus. they can the bus, it. Oh, they ha- you, you have a little book, and they're playing. They're, they're, the play goes on while you're in the bus. Oh, that's great. And okay. the idea here is to get Frank Anglophones to go to the Centaur and to get Anglophones to go to Théâtre de Jaudry. You know, have, how many French plays have you guys seen? Well, let's move on. Okay, <laughs> well, so see, uh, psych- Cyclorama. Really, really, until Centaur. November 3rd, okay. I think. Fantastic. Uh, Maybe then November 6th. If you're out on the town this weekend, you have a restaurant recommendation? Ah, do I have a restaurant recommendation? Beyond ah. where we are now, beyond Great Course. Okay. I really, I'm going to name two new restaurants, one called Antoinetta, which is an amazing Italian restaurant, which is over on Saint-Soutique and Papineau. Fantastic, 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 uh, affordable Italian food. Okay, ready to get And down. another one called Paloma, which is on St. Lawrence near Cremazy, and um, Provencal food, very low-key, wonderful. And okay. I would like to mention yes, Bill. an upscale Lebanese place opened about a year ago on Notre Dame near Mountain called Shea, which to my mind had the best hummus I have ever had in my life. This is an odd thing to recommend because no, but like Baba Ganoush restaurants make hummus. But like the kebab, but I mean it's like on a level that is like Stanley Tucci would appreciate. It was unbelievable. Okay. I mean, and I've been to some great Lebanese restaurants in the city. I mean, they're, you know, go Dawu or Les Sirenes or places like that. This is on another level. Wow. Okay. And what about you? I, I don't recommend one, but I, we've become a, a addicted now to a place in Little Italy called a Primo Secondi. That's not right. Which, That's for, for place. me, it's, the, it's small. We know the chef, who's a wonder, Roberto Stabile, uh, and just love going there. Uh, I don't know, it's Italian, but it's consistent and it's not super Classic expensive. Classic Italian. It's great. Yeah, Love yeah. It a lot. Wow, been, I think been been for a while. started there, left, and maybe went back. Maybe. Yeah. So but it's, it's love that place. Classic become service, very com- classic become setting. Become comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, wow. so let me talk about one other thing. Speaking of restaurants, you must be very upset by this. Uh, they're the Michelin Guide in Toronto. Ah. Now, what's going on exactly? Well, everybody is kind of up in arms because they say, why did Michelin choose Toronto before Montreal, which we are obviously the superior food, food city, restaurant city. And I say that I love Toronto, but I think anybody in Toronto would say for, the, you know, for our size of city, the breadth of our restaurant, restaurant scene is much greater than theirs, but theirs is fantastic now too. It's wrong to think that Michelin chose Toronto. Toronto paid Michelin uh, in the millions of dollars to come in and... But that's um, not scrupulous. 
Well, no, but the, it's wrong for people to think that the Michelin guy is just going to come here because they think, you know, Toronto is a great dining Well, isn't scene. that what they should be doing? Well, I think that's how it started in France for sure. But, you know, there was one in Vegas. There isn't anymore. There was one in L.A. There so isn't So we have anymore. no michelin starred restaurants in this city. No, because we have no Michelin guy. There's no one to bring them. Now, there, there's going to be a very interesting article in the Gazette on October 29th written by Chad Levy about this. We talked to him about this. It goes into a lot of detail about why. Okay. But we right now don't have michelin starred restaurants because we don't have a Michelin guide. But even if the Michelin guide comes here and Valerie Plant decides to, you know, the city of Montreal and tours in Montreal wants to fork over a million plus dollars Shocked and to have them come because they're going to go to Vancouver. So wait too. a second. So this guy in Toronto who worked at Schwartz's for 20 years goes to Toronto in a year, opens up a smoked meat place based on Schwartz's, gets a Michelin bib. Yeah, a bib. It's yeah, not, not a star. star. It's just like a bib, a bib, like we wear at a restaurant. It means they recommend. It means it's a recommendable Like it's a neighborhood kind of a place. Yeah, so, where it's, a, it's not a star restaurant is a very fancy it's, restaurant. It's wrong. It's wrong, Leslie. Well, Easy, Bill. No, Easy. no, because in Singapore, a street food vendor got a Michelin star a few years ago. Well, and, and she and, hates it. And, and she a, says... She doesn't like having and in the stars. Tokyo subway station, a sushi guy. Has three stars. Three so stars. before yeah. we wrap up, you, speaking of food, have not one, but two new cookbooks. Out. Yes. Oh, yes, right? I didn't bring them. Oh I should have brought God. them and held them up. I have two new cookbooks, one in French, one in English, to represent both solitudes. I'm trying to cover all the solitudes. Richard, and, uh, yeah, you should so, be handing yeah. these out on the bus going between theaters. Well, be yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I mean, selling them holding the it up, you know. But uh, one is called um, Make Every Dish Delicious, which is an English book. I will actually hold it up in the next podcast. I have podcast the French interview. versions of both in there. And the other terrific. one's called Un Weekend Chez Leslie in French. So okay. it's good to know. And both available locally and available online? Both available locally and online, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, All yes. right. That's going to do it for us. Another edition of the Corner Booth Podcast. And again, thanks to our sponsors, Empire Gold, Guaranteed Industries. Uh, we'll see you next week.